Working for the minimum wage isn't fun. The work is hard, and then you also have to work with the knowledge that your boss is literally prevented by law from paying you less money, even if they wanted to. But there isn't just one minimum wage. There's actually a whole tangled mess of them throughout the country. Yes, you have the national one, and it's 725, and it's been that since 2009. But across the country, states and cities and counties have chosen to raise their minimum wage higher than the national one. So in places like Seattle and 2019, New York City, the minimum wage is up to $15 an hour. That's the highest. But then you go to New Hampshire, and you can make as little as $7.25 an hour. As of 2017, 39% of the country lives in a place where the federal minimum wage is the floor. The other 61% live in places where it's been raised higher. The divide between those two worlds is growing larger and larger. And we know that the minimum wage is and will probably always be one of the most controversial topics in economics. On one side, you have people saying it needs to be raised because if you raise it, it'll help lower income workers make more money. Then you have opponents saying that raising the minimum wage will actually lead to lower employment and in the end, workers will make less money. You've heard these arguments before. So let's look into it. How have minimum wage increases actually affected those making the lowest wages? A recent study came out by the Economic Policy Institute that found that between 2013 and 2017, places that have seen minimum wage increases saw low-end wages boosted by 5%. In states that haven't raised the minimum wage, the increase was less than half of that. The same study also showed that the increase boosted the wages of women in the bottom 10th percentile of workers by 5%. That's compared to less than the 1% in states that hadn't raised the wage. That makes sense considering that women are disproportionately represented in low-wage jobs. That's also true for people of color. And it's not just the increased wages themselves that matter. It's also how those increases are coming to be. Right now, the federal minimum wage number is fixed. It's been stuck at 725 for about a decade. And because inflation exists, the minimum wage actually gets weaker and weaker every year that it isn't raised. So that $2,009 is only worth 86 cents now. Here's a chart of the actual dollar amount of the minimum wage since its beginning in the 30s. Now here's a chart for the inflation adjusted a number. We can see that right now, when you account for inflation, the minimum wage is actually worth less than it was 60 years ago. So to actually raise the minimum wage, Congress has to proactively pass a law and the president has to sign it. And while minimum wage increases are broadly popular, politically recently, that hasn't been the case. President Obama spent his entire term trying in vain to raise the minimum wage to no avail. The alternate is to treat the minimum wage like social security and automatically increase it to match inflation. And over the last decade, a number of cities and states have decided to do just that. Right now, 18 states in Washington, D.C. have or are planning on indexing their minimum wages to inflation. So with each passing year, the 39% and the 61% grow further and further apart.